loud and clear? Okay, fine. So you can ask a few questions. I've got some topics which I'm going to discuss because I've got a lot of mails from people and uh, those mails are, you know, it's not possible to answer via mail. So it's not possible for me to explain. So that's why I'm going to cover some of the topics which I've already written down in a piece of paper. And uh, you can ask your questions if you wish. Okay, what I see is uh, some finger picking basics, please. And you're talking about a YouTube lesson or right now you want to know something about finger picking. Okay, fine. So, you know, so if you are uh, really willing to learn finger style, then there are a few things that you need to take care of initially. One is the thumb position and the position of the other fingers. And before I give you some idea about finger picking, there are a few things that you need to know. One is like if you are playing classical guitar, you know, with nylon strings, then the finger position is different. You know, the classical people are very rigid about their finger position. But if you are playing an acoustic guitar, like most of us, you know, finger style. this sort you know slap and play like John Mayer kind of playing for that what you need to do is this is the most important thing these three fingers should be joined all right and the thumb you should keep it parallel to the strings okay first get used to the position and there are a few things that you can do later on one is you can rest your little finger here on the guitar but initially it's not uh, recommended First, try to balance your arm, you know, so the way I'm keeping my right hand, you know, it's floating. So I'm not taking any support whatsoever. So I'm keeping the thumb here straight and these three fingers are stuck together, alright? So, and now, these three fingers should be placed on three strings, you know. So initially, you should try out with third, second and first. And you have to keep it like a hook. Okay, so you are pulling the strings with these three and with the thumb you are actually pushing down on the bass strings. So what I mean by bass strings is 6, 5 and 4. So for example if you are taking any chord like G, so here the 6th string is a root note. So I can take the bass note here and I can play the thumb here and these fingers 1, 2, 3 are going to play these 3 strings and now my thumb is free to play the bass notes on the 6th, 5th and 4th string. So you can take group of 4 notes. So I would recommend that uh, those who are interested in finger style since I am talking about this topic get a copy and write down the key points. Okay. So you can have different picking patterns like I can tell this as 1, 2, sorry, thumb, 1, 2, 3 and the number of beats we are taking is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I can play the 6th string first, thumb, 1, 2, 3, then 5th string, 4th string. So this is how you can get used to the finger picking thing. And now you can write down like T1, 2, 3 and now you are free to experiment with all sorts of combinations like instead of taking T1, 2, 3 I can take T3, 2, 1 right so you can have a different sound now. And now you can take different chord progressions like G, D, C. D. So using these chord progressions you can take G, D and now here when you are taking different chords you need to be aware of the bass notes. For example when you play D 
you don't strum actually more than four strings. Sometimes you can strum five strings, but four strings is the most recommended number of strings because this is the fourth uh, string root. So the D note is right here. So this is how you can get started with finger style. Okay, just practice this and and the most important thing you need to find a teacher, you know, who's going to teach you. Then it's very easy. Anyway, so let's move on to the next question. Okay, so uh, a question is coming up for bar chords. Before you learn bar chords, you need to understand a few things. That is, a bar chord comes from an open chord. Alright, so there is a system called caged. So I'll be just giving you an overview of the system and you need to learn it on your own because it's huge. I cannot finish it in like five minutes. So cage system tells you C, A, G, E and D. These are the open chords, right, available. So that's why it's caged, so nothing fancy. C, A, G, E, D. And each and every open chord can be converted into a bar chord. All right. How? When you play an open chord, what does an open chord mean? You know, the chords having open strings, as simple as that. So, when you are holding a C chord, most people think that the notes they are playing are the ones that they are using the fingers on. But actually there are a few open strings that you are playing which you are not aware. If you are then good. good. So the third string is open and first string is open. So actually the chord shape looks like this. But here I'll come to it, you know, a few questions I can see, good questions. Just hold on, let me finish this. So, the open strings, you know, you need to put your finger on, if you want to make it a bar chord, because here already the tension is maintained because of the guitar. So the original shape is like this, you know, this finger, this finger, open string, this finger and open string. And if you want to play a bar chord, you know, you need to move it to the next fret. So, this was C and it becomes C sharp. So, this is C sharp major or D flat major. Alright. And now many people will be confused because they don't know the notes on the guitar. So, the most important thing that you should take care of is learn the notes on the guitar. So, that's very important. At least the notes on the 5th string and the 6th string. So, it's always better to start with something easy. So, here you know. I'll be telling you, the open string is E and the first fret is F, third fret is G, A, B, okay, fifth is A, sixth is, sorry, this is seventh, this is B. So if you at least learn the notes on the sixth string, you know, first, third, fifth and seventh, then it will be useful for you because you can move the bar chords and different bar chords have got the root notes on different strings. So in terms of that you can find out which bar chord you are playing so if you are playing a c shape bar chord so from the cage system what we get to know is the bar chords have different you know shapes so since this is coming from c major it's called c shape and the most important thing here in order to track a c shape bar chord all you need to know is the root note of the bar chord is on the fifth string all right so here this is your and this concept actually helps you to use a capo as well so this is my c shape bar chord and my root note is on the fifth string because you know the c note is here on the fifth string third fret a a sharp b c so these are the things that you need to know because there are many people who don't know theory and they say that why should i learn theory i don't care and they want to play a lot of stuff so it's not gonna happen I'm sorry so this is your C note here and the C shape bar chords will have the root note here so now if 
you want to play i am taking a very difficult shape so forgive me but anyway the concept is more important you won't have to play it straight away so if you want to play a d major chord using c shape then what you need to do is you have figured out how the bar chord is formed right so i am playing a c and i am thinking that there is there is an imaginary capo which i am putting here so that capo needs to be a finger so i am adjusting my fingers so that i can take this chord shape and i'm moving it so this is my c next fret is c sharp so sometimes i might go too fast because this is just a lecture so it's not possible to teach you everything you make a note of the things that i'm telling you caged system so you do a research on it in youtube you'll find great lessons on caged system and you can buy few books and stuff you know and learn them so if i want to play a d major chord my d is right here the fifth string fifth fret is d and now this shape is fixed so this is a beauty of guitar you know you get one shape and you keep moving and you get 12 chords finished so this is my d major and this is my e major so if you keep on moving and if you keep track of the fourth finger all right and you get different chords and now for example you'll see that many of us you know who make videos they use a capo so if in a song you know you need to play a d major chord but here the other chords are quite difficult for you to play then we can use some other shape like this one and if we think of this as d we can put a capo here and we just play c major and we get the substitute of d actually this is d only so we are keeping the same sound but changing the shape for our convenience all right and similarly the cage system talks about other chords as well c a g e d there are many others but the most commonly used now now i'll get to some commonly used chord shapes so e shape is very common right so the way you hold e is like this and many of you know how to play f major chord right so basically f is nothing but an e shape chord so similarly you need to track the open strings you know sixth string second string and first string is open in e so in order to put your finger you know here you need to use a bar all right and the moment you move it to the next fret and here the root note is on the sixth string so this is your f f major chord and this is how you can move it up the fret so this is your f major chord right and as i have already mentioned that you need to learn the notes and if i move the same shape here my tracker is the first finger and here it's on the sixth string so if i put it here sixth string third fret can you tell me which note is this i can see some funny comments <laughs> okay so this is my g because this thing is g note and this is a chulta bujhte pari ni kete diye je selu ne ato choto kore so this is your a major and similarly you can take all chords you know b flat a flat and uh, c sharp same shape if you move it along the fret so this is a very useful one e shape and the other useful chord shape that we use is and similarly you have a major or and minor chord right using this shape so this is your major and if you remove it this is minor so e shape minor e shape major so when you are playing a chord shape in a bar you need to understand which shape you are using bar chord gulo shop dekhan bar chord ami bole dicchi apni nije dekhe nite parben thank you so this is how you can move either major or minor for example in a song if you have a g minor chord or g sharp minor like in most songs you know in the songs they use a lot of c sharp minor scale or e major scale where they have the g sharp minor chord and f sharp minor i forgot 
the name of the song. It's a song by Papun. Anyway, so this is how you can get major minor chord in E shape and the other handy chord shape is the A shape, right? And this is very difficult when it comes to the bar chord. So similarly A major, you know, you can have it like this, same concept and in A, you know, the root note is on the fifth string. So you can move it along. So this is my A, this is B, this is C. And similarly, if you move A minor, you get minor chords. So your task will be to find out uh, the cage system and uh, figure out the G, sorry, the E shape and the A shape. Similarly, you get a lot of standard major minor chords. All right. And then you can find out the ways to find out same note on different set of strings. So there is a rule, I'll come to it. It, it can take 5 seconds to find out same note, it's very easy. But we'll come to it and some other question, yes, GAQ. Thank you, Shagor Roy. And any more questions? So somebody wants to learn about finger tapping. Okay, fine, finger tapping. So, when you tap, what you do, you take some notes on the left hand and tapping is basically right hand hammer on, as simple as that. So, I am not able to post. You want to post what? Okay, so we are back. So, you can... Uh, take any finger here and you need to know the scales and what you want to use for tapping that's more important so the basic thing is you need to use your most people use the middle finger because this is quite strong so anyway let's get back to tapping the thing you need to do is just get used to this thing the right hand should do this thing and I'll get a pick just a second if I have something in my pocket Yes, so while playing you can use tapping, you know. Okay, something of this sort. It's very difficult to tap in acoustic guitar. It's not an acoustic guitar technique. But anyway, I'll try to help you out. So generally, when you are tapping, first thing to do is just get used to this. The pattern I'm lately playing a lot of finger style, so I have nails, so it's very difficult use tapping while having nails and here you can put any finger like if we take our first finger on the first string third fret and and put the tapping finger on the 12th fret and I put my fourth finger on the it's a bit difficult so if you want to learn you have to deal with it otherwise you are not eligible for this your fourth finger may be on the seventh fret and uh, tapping finger on the 10th fret what happened so generally when we tap we take arpeggios like any chord so you need to be able to understand those 1 3 5 major chord if you are playing a G major chord or any chord the notes that are present are the first third and fifth for minor it's first flat third and fifth so so if I'm taking a straightforward horizontal arpeggio it's like this one three five this is major and now you can add some other extensions like instead of taking you can take six here so your scale theory should be Now you can take different patterns also according to your wish but the basic thing to practice when you are learning arpeggio is finding song by ear it will take you a lot of time because it's not a single thing that I'll tell you and you'll understand you have to go through a lot of stuff scale theory and stuff anyway I'll come to it important and interesting topic so you can take either major like this so you need to understand see two whole steps are third and here the fifth is three frets from the 
third this is a major and if you just bring your little finger here half step back this is minor so accordingly you can form different patterns so you can take G major G and now I'm playing A minor here fifth eighth twelfth and B minor is seventh tenth and fourteenth okay so you can take three chord shapes and practice sorry and practice this is how you can start tapping practice and you can do it with different strings and later on you know like uh, when you are more into different stuffs like pentatonic scale so there are a lot of stuff uh, tapping options in pentatonic scale so you can take one shape so I'm playing A minor pentatonic anyway so you can explore a lot of options so it's not that easy but it's something that you need to learn you know gradually take something very simple anyway so let's come to some other question hello Rishabh and and now let's come to the most important question how to find songs by ear what was the question finding song by ear okay so let's come to this question just a second how to develop perfect pitch find a vocal teacher for example if you want to find out how to find a song by ear so there are few things you need to take care one is you need to know a particular scale and the chords related to that scale so it's a very important thing note it down it's called harmonized major scale harmonized major scale will tell you like what are the chords present in a particular scale like in a scale we've got seven notes for example if we take C major scale we have C D E F G A B C total seven notes okay and since this is a C major scale then definitely we have a C major chord from it right all the chords come from a scale and the second note is D so we can have a chord using this note and the second chord is D minor you need to have a teacher or you can you should learn it on your own from different books to find out how the second chord is minor in a scale you know basically the chords will be formed of the notes that are available in the scale so it's a huge topic I take two classes to explain to my students prove it entirely how the chords are formed scales like which scale has got which uh, note in it and stuff and which note is forming a major or minor chord but I'll tell you the gist you know write it down in any scale you have three major chords and three minor chords I'm talking about a major scale all right so the three major chords are the one four and five so it means in C major scale C D E F F is fourth one two three four and G is five so we have one C major four is F F major five is G so We can have a lot of progressions and these three chords come together and 2, 3 and 6 are minor chords. So 2 is here, D is the second here, C, D, E, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 is A. So D minor, E minor and A minor are the minor chords in C major scale. So if we take a look at the C major scale, what we have is 3 major chords, 3 minor chords, write it down, C, F, G. 
D minor, E minor and A minor. Alright. So using these chords you can form your own song. Like you can take any chord. Like C, A minor, F, G. So there are lots of songs. So C A minor F G then you can have C E minor F G and so on. So we can have a lot of options. And similarly if you are aware of these progressions and you know which chord is major minor then there is the next step. The next step is a random song is going on right. So you don't know how to find the chords of the song and you don't know which scale the song is in. So you need to know the scale shape, right? So when the song is going on, I used to do this a lot, you know. In my hostel when people are doing different stuffs in a room and the computer is on playing music, you know. So I would sit with my guitar and other people doing different stuffs, you know. You don't want to know what the other people mostly used to do. So I would used to sit there and uh, when the song is going on, I, I knew the scale shapes and if you just know one shape, you start playing the same shape in different positions and finally you'll see that a particular scale is matching, then you'll see yes, this is matching. So then you find out, okay, which note is this? For example, the song is in E flat major scale. So my goodness, E flat major scale is very difficult, you might think. So, but fine, you know the notes of E flat major scale. You need to have a scale chart, you know, where you get all the scale notes written. And you, from there, you need to mark the one, three, one, four, five for major chords and two, three, six for minor chords. And similarly, once you found out that E flat major scale, then you can pick out what are the major chords and what are the minor chords. For example, let's take C. I don't want to make your life difficult. Then you already know C, F, G and D minor, E minor and A minor. These are the six chords present in this scale. And you have found out the song is in C major scale. So now the next task is to listen to the bass line of the song. You know, so when a song is going on, for example, two chord song maybe it's very difficult to hear all the notes and find out for a beginner so the bass line might be going on like so which you can clearly hear and then finding out the bass line so you keep on playing different notes till you match the bass line so if you once you start matching for it, for example a particular line you can clearly hear that your C is matching with the chord. So then you can uh, say that uh, this is a C chord. So you already know that C in this scale is a major chord you can put. Similarly if you find an F then you can put a major chord. Alright so this is how you can find out uh, songs by ear but this is a long a huge step basically because you need to know the scales and my request to all the viewers is that you should learn all the major scales up and down the neck all the shapes take one scale like C major and learn it throughout the neck and stuff alright and then gradually your ears will start opening up so we'll come to the next question now okay so uh, Arpit has written down, miss, down, miss, up, up, down, 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 up. In this strumming pattern, he is facing problem when he is changing from G to C. So this is a common problem, you know, you are not the only one. So here what happens, you need to learn how to switch between G and C first. Then you try the strumming pattern. And in case you guys don't know, there is a strumming course which I have already uploaded. It's called Strumming from Scratch. You can learn the strumming pattern step by step. It's from very easy to somewhat advanced. Alright. So here 
I'll be showing you how to switch from G to C. You know, whenever you are taking a chord progression or any two chords, what you need to do is you need to understand how to switch, right? So that is, you know, when you are in G and you are going to C, you need to put the third finger first. You know, the rule is always follow the lower strings first. Lower in the sense this is thicker and the sound they produce is low in pitch so that's why i'm saying lower or you can think higher in terms of height so whenever i'm changing to any other chord the rule is always from from here to here sequentially you should never hold a chord like this from here to here this is wrong even for g like this f like this so it should be sequentially following the strings all right so I hope that if you keep on practicing this movement and there's one other thing when you are shifting chords many people have the tendency of lifting the fingers off too much away from the guitar so that is also wrong so you need to keep your fingers very close to the strings all right and in that case it will be very easy for you to switch okay so let's move to the next question any exercises for bar chords exercises to strengthen little finger okay two questions I will answer now any exercises for bar chord so this is very good exercise which I learned from my teacher so I'll be taking the F chord right this is E shape so what you need to do here is you need to put the fingers sequentially you put the first finger on 6th string 1st fret third finger 5th string 3rd fret 4th finger 4th string 3rd fret I hope you know this shape right so I am just putting the fingers sequentially without lifting them off so 1st fret 3rd fret 3rd fret second fret and after I'm done with the second fret then I'm lifting this finger and barring on the first and on the second and first string and playing these two notes so this is very very useful and you gradually move it up the fretboard so this is how you can learn the notes as well so this is F major you say F sharp major and it'll hurt you know and it's very useful many people think that similarly you keep on saying the notes you know F sharp G and play this and so on if you keep on moving it will help your finger and the next question any tip for finger strengthening okay so I'll answer two questions in one exercise so another thing for practicing bar chord what you can do is you put the bar okay and whenever whenever you're putting the bar I'm taking it on the third fret you can roll your finger like this lean it and keep the thumb here below so when you are holding bar chord and if you keep the thumbs fairly below then you get a lot of strength all right so it's very easy many people hold it like this I used to hold it like this as well but later on I figured out that this one is more comfortable rather than this so this is the bar chord shape and now since you are not used to first thing you need to do is just play each and every string and find out whether all the strings are ringing or not the main problem is like we have these divisions in our fingers I don't know what they call in English what they are called so when the string falls here so it becomes muted so you need to be very careful with this and one more thing when you are playing a bar chord don't hold the bar like this so I, I see many people hold it like this the finger goes above the string so that is not what we want let's keep it precise so if I am taking a 6 string chord like F major I don't want to put it here I'll just keep it as much as close to the string the fingertip I'm talking about as possible okay and if I'm taking B minor I'll bring it here so that my tip touches the, the 
the sixth string and this is a five string chord the sixth string is muted you know it should be very precise so let's get back to this first you do and then gradually you bring one one by one fingers and get used to it this is a good exercise and in this way you know you'll be able to check each and every string most of the people they hold it and strum and they see that it's not happening and they are unable to figure out what's the real problem so you have to find out the underlying problem by picking the notes okay and the next thing this is a very good exercise you know everybody write it down or put it in your head so i'm barring you know the third fret and this is a chromatic exercise which i'm playing so my other fingers will play the third sorry the so let's do it on the fifth fret it will be easier fifth the second finger on sixth third on seventh fourth on eighth so this is a bar this is very easy you can try it out and understand okay so this one you can practice it will give you a lot of strength on the left hand and one guy was asking how to strengthen the little finger so this is how you can do it and uh, ha so strengthening the third and fourth finger so there's a great guitar player gatri govan the same thing was asked in his uh, one of his sessions you know and he answered in order to get better at using different fingers is to use them more so that's the only option but anyway i'll give you something precise so the way you do chromatic exercise just think that the, these two fingers are not there just do the chromatic with the third and fourth so i'm on the fifth fret 5656565656565 then 6565656565 I already talked about the cage system bar chords you know so you can search bar chords space tams guitar and there you'll get a lesson you know where i have explained what is arpeggio arpeggio means notes of the chord played individually like if you are playing c major and if you are playing the notes individually this is an arpeggio or this is used in rhythm like forgive me for the poor vocals i can't sing so this is for rhythm and if you want to play arpeggio you know if you are soloing like for soloing then you need to play the 1 3 5 if it's a major arpeggio of the scale so this the key point is you need to know the scales otherwise you can't play music you know so everything comes from the scale 1 3 5 1 flat 3 5 minor so the things that i'm telling you just make a note of it and find it out because the the topics are extremely deep you know the things that i'm talking about right now actually might take you 5 6 years to master and hardly i am here for an hour so definitely it's not possible okay so find out the cage system learn about it and find out the scale shapes all the positions okay please tell some exercises to practice arpeggios so the arpeggios if you want to practice i have uh, a few arpeggio exercises like c shape arpeggio again we are getting back to the cage system you know the chords that you have you know c shape you can have c shape major arpeggio c shape minor arpeggio and similarly you can have other shapes as well so again one more thing 
just type arpeggio space stamps guitar so you'll get a lot of sweeping arpeggio exercises so you can learn it i have already provided some detailed arpeggio studies all right so let's move on to the next question um how to sing while playing the guitar i have already uploaded a lesson on this how to sing and play along singing and playing along you can search how to sing and play guitar space stamps guitar you'll get it but i can give you one more tip you know not one more one basic example of that is the most important thing is first ly you need to match the vocals with the chord for example if a song has got e so first thing you need to do is play e and sing this is the first step just match your vocals and secondly you know you should strum the chords that you already know like you know the chords of this the song and try to sing the song without using the chords but keeping the beat like 1 2 3 4 like there's a video of mine i uploaded two chords basic song pearl so that many people have learned from it they write to me you know in regular intervals so you can learn that song pearl space times guitar you can search so here if if i'm taking this uh -huh. Okay, so with the guitar I'm singing, and without the guitar you have to visualize using the beat. So these two things, if you can connect later on, then you'll be able to sing. This is the first step, most important. So hum, rahe aana rahe kal. So here what I'm doing, I'm playing separately and singing separately. but the common thing between my singing and playing is i am maintaining the beat so once you start understanding that then you can bring these two things together it takes quite some time it's not that easy you know i'll tell you and you learn it in a few seconds okay and a few more questions sir in harmonic minor scale is only the seventh note raised or both third and seventh only the seventh See, these are basic things you are going to get in any book or in YouTube. So for that, you need don't need my help. So if you ask in C major scale, C is the root note or E. It's equivalent. Anyway, seventh is raised. So in harmonic minor scale, it's a minor scale with a major seventh. As simple as that. So if you know minor scale. a minor scale has got notes i'll tell you 1 2 flat 3 4 flat sorry 5 flat 6 flat 7 1 so whenever we learn scale we try to put each and every scale in terms of the major scale the mother of all scale so in my the difference between minor and major scale is you have a flat 3 flat 6 and flat 7 So three notes are flattened, but in harmonic minor you keep the seventh natural. That means it's a major seven. So and if you are interested in the progressions of harmonic minor scale, there are some the widely used chord progressions you get in Bollywood. You know, in fact, this new song. I have this lesson. To suffer, my rah, to hi me remains. A minor, then E major. So E major is actually coming from the harmonic minor scale. So if it were uh, an A minor scale, it would have been E minor. So that's why you need to know the scales. I can't help you. You won't understand what I'm saying if you don't start. exploring the scales i'm really sorry about that there is no shortcut because if you want to do mathematics and if you say that i don't want to understand the formulas then 
you are wasting your time plucking lessons what would you like to know how plucking are used so if you want to pick and strum just uh, search how to pick and strum space stamps guitar you will get a few lessons but anyway since you have asked what we can do is generally in country music they have a lot of picking and strumming going on so if you want to strum and pick then the key notes can be the bass notes that can either be the root or the fifth so if you have a c major chord and instead of playing normally what you can do you can take the bass note as the fifth the five and the, the fifth and the root so you can hold c like this okay so you can pick the bass notes and strum so there are different formats like and you can take walking bass scales so what i was using i was playing a chord progression from a c major scale so now by now if you are following it from the beginning you may already know that c f and g d minor e minor and uh, a minor were the chords in c major scale and here while picking the notes i can use the open position c major scale find out the open position c major scale all right okay my camera position is not good okay so why am i getting lost in placing myself properly okay i think this is better and you can use different notes from the scale like if you are using is it better i have very less space here uh, i think this is better okay anybody help me with the position i'm lost my fingers raise lot while practicing the scales any exercises for that yes think that you won't raise the fingers too much the scales itself are the best exercises to practice and if you have the tendency of lifting the fingers this is wrong so try and keep it very close to the strings and one more thing while practicing and one more thing while practicing the scales what you need to do is don't try and lift the fingers off like if you are playing c major scale so what i am doing i am playing the second finger fifth string third fret and then fourth finger fifth string fifth fret and in the meantime not moving the finger off i'm keeping the fingers when i'm going to the next string I'm, i can lift it off then i'm not lifting the fingers so this exercise you need to do in order to make your fingers more perfect and this thing actually will help you to play legato later on you know see i'm not using my right hand very difficult to win acoustic guitar all right modes please okay so give us more information about modes i will just a second sir how to know scale from any song just 
when a song is going on just try playing different different scales you know one shape the most basic one two four one two four one three four finger wise you can find it on the internet and keep on moving the same shape in different position and you you'll find that one scale will match with the song so then you know <clears throat> which scale you are on all right I'll be answering few more questions before we finish the session and then I'll tell you about uh, some there are few important things that you need to do in order to understand or know more about so sir can you explain in short what are seventh chords example E minor 7 so seventh chords what you mean by seventh chords what you really mean by uh, is dominant seven chords like the ones that create tension and in, in blues it's most common dominant 7 chords like C7, D7 so you can find out C7, D, uh, like dominant 7 in my YouTube channel like write dominant 7 space stamps guitar you will get that thing and E small m 7 the thing that you wrote was minor 7 chords so there are 3 types of chords like major 7, minor 7 and dominant 7 major 7 is very simple if you have a major chord I have a proper lesson for this as well write down major 7 space stamps guitars you write down the key points later on you can take a look at it if you are interested so major 7 is basically a major chord with a major 7th like in a C major scale C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 if you add the 7th note with that major chord you get a major 7 chord okay and in a minor chord if you add the minor 7 like the 7th note of the minor scale you get a minor 7 like there are many chords like D minor 7 E minor 7 and in fact you have 12 minor 7 chords all the notes can have a minor 7 chord okay so that's it and uh, there's a dominant 7 chord is a major chord like C in the C chord if you add the flat 7 that is a minor 7th you get a dominant 7th chord and now I'll be giving you a little overview of the modes modes are basically you know what do you mean by modes basically when we talk about mode it means like if you are saying that if I'm talking about you okay for example you are in a party mode right now it's Saturday night and you are partying hard you are in a party mode so you are having a lot of fun right now and Monday morning you are going to school college or office so you are in a working mode the mode ch is changing but the person is same right so you are operating in different modes you are in a happy mode right now because your results were good so the same person you are in a sad mood mood mode whatever you can say something bad happened you failed in your maths exam music is like maths so you are sad so the same thing having different characters you know at different times is what I understand by mode and now If I am talking about one scale, like C major scale, so when I am starting from C, now the important thing write down, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, these are the notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and number the notes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and last C, you don't have to number anything, fine, so, if we start the scale from the first note, C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, Okay, I am taking two octave C major system. same notes if I am starting from C I am getting a major sound so it's a happy sound so this is called Ionian mode the name we've got Ionian or major is same and now if we take the second note you know now you are playing C major scale from D to D like the last C that you have written from there you can again continue like D E F G A B C okay so it's a cycle never ending loop basically so 
and now if I start from the second node, it might sound very simple, but actually you need to devote a lot of time using the modes because it's not about playing the scale and bus. Oh yeah, it's not like that. So you need to improvise, have different ideas and stuff, different chord progressions. I'll be talking about my favorite mode that is a Dorian mode, and the other I'll just name them, but. A little bit I'll talk about the Dorian mode. So if I'm starting from D to D, so this is the Dorian mode. Okay, so the example is if you start from the second note of any major scale, second to second if you play, it's a Dorian mode. And the people are disappearing <laughs> gradually when we are talking real stuff. Anyway. So if you listen to this sound you'll see that it's a minor kind of a mode and if a chord progression goes on like D minor type chord so that's a Dorian type sound so you can make it D minor 7 also Basically, if I play D to D, I get a feel of Dorian sounds. You can write down a chord progression you can record using your mobile or recorder, whatever you have. D minor 7 and G7. So using these two chords, you can improvise. So it will give you an example of Dorian mode. And the fun thing about this is if you play sorry these chords and try playing the C major scale you do it and you'll see that the even if you play it for years you won't get the sound that you need to get back to the C note so it will gravitate the sound will gravitate towards D so however you try to end your scale in C it won't sound good so you have to go to the D note and another thing what you can do if you can't record or do anything you can play the fourth string open and play the C major scale and you'll get the sound of the Dorian mode and similarly there's a person who's written everything Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian and Locrian those are the name of the other modes so if I start from the second note it's Dorian if I start from the third note it's Phrygian same scale same notes but the starting point is changing all right and similarly a lydian is also something i really like so lydian also you start from the fourth note like if you are playing c major scale lydian will be from f to f okay i think we are almost done so before i finish i'll uh, be telling you a few things you know that will help you to improve your guitar playing because in India, you know what, uh, the scene is like everybody knows about Bollywood and if they want to be a guitar player, they are inspired by Arijit Singh. So that's a sad story because Arijit Singh doesn't play guitar. Even if he plays, he's not a guitar player. Okay, so the thing that we mostly miss is the great guitar players who are already present in the country and we are not aware of it. Okay. So, what we can do is, I would recommend that people who love music, even if you play for a hobby, you need to watch more uh, concerts, you know. So, you'll be having local pubs wherever you are. Like, if you are in Calcutta, there are a few pubs like someplace else, Princeton, and there are many uh, pubs. So, if you keep track of the pubs, you will get to hear about the live shows that happen on Saturday nights and throughout the week some show, show or the other goes on. So, <clears throat> this thing you should take care of. Go and watch concerts. Then actually you will be getting into 
the real music because you need to watch people live you know who really know how to play the guitar not that the guy in your neighborhood who knows 1000 songs using gdc so that's not going to inspire you in any way that's going to mislead you anyway that will help you to get more interested in guitar but that's not real guitar playing so you should go and watch a lot of concerts in the pub and there are great events that are happening you know like in 87 weekender so you can go to if it's possible for you go to the metro cities like and uh, maybe the normal cities because it's happening in a lot of cities not only in the metro cities so that's why I stopped so you can go to Pune Shillong and you can take a look at how the people are playing you know a lot of international bands coming so you can go to Shillong if you are interested or in Pune Steven Wilson is coming and Vertical Horizon is coming and there are great guitar players in India if you are in Bombay there are like lots and lots of pubs Pune, Calcutta so lots of options so the most important thing go and watch concerts and in the music scene you know you can uh, like contribute by buying uh, the stuffs that the Indian musicians are making actually you are helping the people who have a lot of money you know the Bollywood guys so you are making somebody make more money who are making business out of music so that's good it's not wrong but if you are really interested then you can go to like uh, different places pubs watch the concerts and and take a look at different independent artists from india you know like warren mandonsa is a great guitar player <coughs> sorry prasanna from chennai there is a music institute in south india it's called sam s a m swarnabhumi academy of music so if you are really good in guitar playing you can go there join Sam take up guitar properly and you can check out other great guitar players like Dhruv Ghanekar Dhruv Ghanekar write down the names Baiju Dharmajan great guitar player from Calcutta Amit Dotto brilliant guitar player and there are other good guitar players coming up like uh, Like the Rhythm Shaw, a very young guy, maybe in 21-22 years age. Aysan Nurani once came in a show in Calcutta and uh, when uh, Rhythm came, he hugged him and said, finally I get to meet the great Rhythm Shaw. So great guitar players, you know, very young. And <clears throat> if Rhythm Shaw will be in Pune, I think, I don't know about Shillong, so you can check out these artists there's a girl you know bass player Mohini De she's also very young she tours with A.R. Rahman most of the time and there are bands great bands like Thermal and a Quarter T.A.A.Q they're from Bangalore so there are great musicians you know in India which you uh, whom you need to check out and then you'll understand the scene and help it develop and the most important important thing is find yourself a teacher because most of the things you, you won't be able to find Konar Reddy right amazing guitar player he's a solo guitar player and in Calcutta also there are many great guitar players I can't remember my god I forgot anyway so there are great guitar players Rudy Wallang from Shillong itself Soulmate the name of the band they play the blues and Asan Nurani sometimes comes down to Calcutta which I have mentioned in man, many of my videos <coughs> he comes down to Calcutta to play with a band called Saturday Night Blues so he plays the blues so find these people out watch their concerts buy their music you know I'm sure if you can manage to spend a lot of money on drinking on a Saturday night then definitely this is worth it because the thing that you are paying for on a Saturday night, the next day morning or in fact 2-3 hours after the event, the thing is going down, flush down the toilet. So, and these things are more important. Bodhisattva Ghosh, Orbun Vidda knows everything. <laughs> Bodhisattva Trio, Orinjoy Sharkar, the good guitar players. 
from Calcutta. Anyway, so you find these people buy their albums, so they they don't charge much. You know, hundred bucks, two hundred bucks is nothing these days. You know. Anyway, and uh, there are few things <coughs> that this is an awareness basically. The people, there are many people who are uploading videos in YouTube. They're actually helping you out. And what happens, you know, there's a thing called uh, monetization. So what happens when the ad comes? If you watch the ad, they get a bit of, a little bit of money. But anyway, so it helps them to feel better. So if you are getting something from a musician or any YouTuber or any teacher, and if you really appreciate their effort and you want to pay back then make sure you watch the entire ad in whatever uh, video you are watching so that will make them feel better and they'll do more videos for you you know and you'll be benefited and lots of people you know they have stopped making videos because this world is not a free world you know so it's not possible for one person to keep on giving and other people like wanting more more we want more so it's not possible so these two things a few things which you can do you know to support the music and in in turn you know in return it will also help you because if you keep the artists alive they'll make good music for you they'll help you to develop your own playing and stuff so anyway thanks for watching I think we are done ahead of time you know not ahead of time we are late so I was supposed to finish off at 10.30 we are done so I think that uh, maybe it was of some help I think Ankur Mukherjee played in Raz reboot for Jeet Ganguly maybe again you are talking about Bollywood that's good but find out the independent artists as well so support the music scene so that they support you you get more from them thank you very much and don't forget to watch the entire ad and i'll see you soon good night guys but how do i stop this oh yeah stop streaming i found it thanks for watching and do like us in facebook and twitter where there are pages in the name of tams guitar and also mail me at info at tamsguitar.com if you have any queries and if you like this videos please subscribe to my channel share it with your friends who are in need see you next time bye bye